value for money is very important for me, so I like to use my bags all together sometimes. Help you at the auto map mail. Believe it or not, yes, it's very important to get value out of your money and out of your handbags. And today we are talking about the 10 reasons I think you don't need a massive luxury handbag collection and actually it can be really, really bad for your health, for your wallet, for lots of other reasons and we're gonna jump into it. But before we do that, we are going to say a big hello to Ruby Red Studio. Hi Ruby Red, how are you? And thank you so much for commenting on my last video and if you'd like a shout out in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below, like, subscribe and be here for the fun. Now, today we are going to talk about a beautiful fragrance as we always do. This one is called Nishane. This one has ginger bergamot, pink pepper and green notes. I'm gonna stick the notes as normal up on the screen. She is a spicy floral. Ooh, amber. Mmm. She's delish, as always. I'm going to the dentist after this and I'm going to shower the dentist in my spicy amber floral bergamot pink pepper beautifulness. I hope everything goes okay. Now, without further ado, yes, I wanted to look into this video because I thought to myself, you know, lately I've been looking at my handbag collection and maybe you have too, and I've been going, I'm not the kind of person to always want the latest handbag. You know, the new Chanel 22B collection is coming out, the new Chanel whatever is coming out, or Louis Vuitton. I love a new handbag as much as anybody else, but it really annoys me if my handbags are sitting on the shelves and I'm not using them. It, it, it just gives me all sorts of feels. I'm not messing with you. The number one reason I wanted to talk about was materialism. Are we just buying these bags because we're materialistic? Because we need to have all the time. We just want, want, want. You know, there is a, a state we get to when once our needs are met, but we still want more stuff. We still want more money. We still want more likes. We still want more subscribers. But the actual fact of the matter is that you get to a point where I think the first bag was always gonna be the most exciting bag that we ever got because we aspired to have that bag and once we got it, our needs were met and then we couldn't believe it. There's nothing like your first handbag. There's nothing like your first car. There's nothing like your first kiss. There's nothing like your first house. There's nothing like your first everything. Because after that, it's not novelty anymore. It's a case of, yeah, you know, it was amazing while I was researching for it and I was looking online for it and I purchased it and then I received it and then I unboxed it and then I put it into my wardrobe and then it sat there and then I looked at it. And then what do we feel? A little bit of guilt. So our, our emotions are changing constantly and we have to, we have to ask ourselves, I think constantly, because we're being influenced uh, constantly. I'm influencing you, you're influencing me, we're all influencing each other. I'm getting influenced by other channels. And we just have to ask ourselves, what is the reason that we want these handbags for? Is it like, are we just being selfish? You know, is it just a case of comparison and that we just want to have more than the other person over there? And she has five handbags, so I want 10 handbags. She has the brand new Chanel 22B, so I want the brand new Chanel 22B. There is a lot of that going on and we have to be very, very wary. And I think it's really, really important self-reflection and to ask all these kind of questions of what is the real reason behind why we are buying all these handbags. Now, the main reason I think that not to have too many handbags is because they can absolutely take over your life. And that brings me on to number two. Do handbags own you or do you own your handbags? And I just think this is a good point in that. When it comes to your handbag collection, and this is a great point in that, do they own you? If you have a sizable handbag collection, these are some of my favorites here behind me, and they are, you know, a certain amount, they are of a certain value, certain price, all the rest of it, well then, these bags need to be maintained. These bags need to be insured. These bags need to be safe. These bags, if you're going traveling or anywhere, are you going to be afraid of theft? Are you afraid of security? And all of those things. So your handbag, and the more stuff you have, the more chances and likelihood of you being 
you know, robbed or there's a little bit of envy in other people, even though they mightn't show it sometimes. And they wanna take that joy away from you, maybe to teach you a lesson or just because they have less or other reasons. So there are all kind of things to consider about how you want to live your life. Whether you want to have a more free life, free of worry. Look, we're all gonna have worry. We don't know what's gonna pop up tomorrow or the next day, but minimizing that worry, minimizing the maintenance, minimizing, you know, the amount of space a real estate you need in your house the amount of wardrobe space and clutter and cleaning and all of that kind of stuff really has to be taken into account so that is definitely another uh, good point in that you have to ask yourself is it worth having a massive handbag collection because you keep bringing in more and more and more that requires more space in your house more cleaning more maintenance more insurance more security more risk of theft and it goes on and on and on and on and on number three what i would say and I, my experience is and of other youtubers that are here in this lux community as well selling handbags is a nightmare i have been lucky in that i have had a few amazing amazing yeah, subscribers buy my handbags which for me has been the best experience hi to Ina and hi to all my uh, subscribers out there who have bought some of my handbags and that has been amazing I've been incredibly lucky because I've heard of some absolute nightmare situations but then there's other you know um, people that don't have a platform will try Vestia Collective or Fashion File or Depop or different platforms to sell their bags and those consignment stores can take a massive massive chunk out of your money for what's left for you. I had an experience recently actually with Vestia Collective with my Celine bag. I lost 500 euro on that bag in selling it. They are the chances that you take. I paid 1700 and something when I bought it. I sold it for 1200 and something in Vestia. After I buying it from Vestia Collective, they told me that uh, they, when I sent it to them, they sent it back to me and they went, I'm sorry, we can't authenticate this bag. I said, sorry, what? I bought this bag from you guys. Anyway, it was all resolved in the end, but I mean, that back and forth, I lost the customer originally that I was supposed to have that was wanted to buy the bag because they had a time frame of maybe 24 to 48 hours. That was obviously was lost. So then Vestier ended up buying the bag back from me themselves. Uh, that was a nightmare I didn't need, you don't need. The hassle of the research of listing, photographing, packaging, bringing to the post office, uh, getting the receipt, contacting people, it is hard. So anybody out there that thinks, oh yeah, well it's great, you have a platform, absolutely 100%, it's a lot easier for me to sell bags than it is for a lot of, of other people, but it doesn't mean it's easy in itself per se, and that's why it would stop me from, from buying mountains and mountains and mountains of bags. And I, I am the kind of person, and I think you know this of old, that I love to use my bags. And once they're not being used, they go out the door as quick as they came in. And actually I have a couple of handbags that I'm thinking of letting go, so you might be interested in a couple of those, because I have in, in and around 25. I have a little bit more, but the, the five or six or seven more I have are more contemporary brands, but the 25 I have my core kind of you know, Chanel, Louis Vuittons, YSL, and my one little baby Hermes here. And uh, I would like to kind of get it down to about 15. I really would, I've said that before. And I think it's a lovely number. I think it's manageable, it's lovely, it's neat and tidy. Not saying I won't be buying more handbags, because I will. But once, you know, a new one comes in, I'm gonna let it, another one go. I just don't want, I want my life to be easy and free and I've said that before, I love to travel and all those things. So that is brings me on to my next point. Number four is time. These bags take up our time, right? Which is can be great in one way because we could be doing a whole lot worse. You know, we could be down the pub having an old drink, which isn't a bad idea. But anyway, <laughs> we, you know, they take up our time researching, comparing, checking out what this price against this price, researching and, and just, just spending time looking up the proper bag, making sure you're making the right decision when you could be using that time for something else. Constantly watching YouTube videos on handbags. Don't ever stop watching mine, by the way. <laughs> and yes, that I do it myself all the time. It can be a lovely pastime, a lovely hobby, but sometimes it can turn into a little bit of an obsession. You can travel down this deep, dark hole and it's just bag after bag after bag. You get lost in the whole wanting and acquiring in getting. And my thing in life in general is too much choice, whether it be men, women, dating, men, women, whatever it may be, bags, houses, chocolate bars, sweets, 
too much choice is a bad thing because it, it just makes everything more difficult. And that brings me on to my next point of decision fatigue. Yes, that is a thing. That's why the president, my dear ladies and gents, wears red tie mostly. First of all, it represents power. But second of all, they have like, you know, like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs used to wear polo necks and jeans. And that's what he wore because he didn't want to get up every single day of the week and, you know, tire his brain by deciding what he was going to wear. It's the same with handbags. You get up every day and you kind of go, well, yeah, I'm gonna go and wear this today and what handbag will I wear? Oh my God, what handbag will I wear? More often than not, life is busy, life is fast, life is, you know, it throws up things that we don't expect. So we're there going, oh God, yeah, this outfit, yeah. What handbag will I wear? God, I don't know which handbag because I have 95 handbags and I have to decide which one to wear. Now, what inevitably ends up happening is we reach for the one or two or three or maybe five handbags over and over and over again because they work, because they're easy, because they're convenient. And that is a fact. I have found it. And I hope you don't find that I'm preaching or anything like that. I'm just being real here, really real. And I really would love to know your, your opinions down below. Um, look, the choice is lovely, but yeah, it can be absolutely decision fatigue, you know? So the next one is freedom. For me, freedom is the most, between time and freedom, are the, the best commodities we have in our life. The most important things we have in our life are time and freedom. And I adore my freedom and I adore my free time and I savor it. We only have a certain and infinite amount of time on this planet. And also the freedom to be able to, as I have told you in my last video, I'll be going traveling soon. And I don't have to worry about when I'm in Greece or when I'm in Marbella, oh my God, I hope my handbags are safe at home and um, they're insured and they're locked up and they're safe. And God forbid, you know, if anything happened and all of this kind of stuff. So it gives you the freedom. If you don't own stuff, you're not weighed down by stuff. Hence the ridiculous intro. <laughs> You know me, I love a bit of crack. So that's what I think about the whole freedom thing. The less you have materialistic wise, the less chances are someone's gonna take it from you, the less chances. I mean, have I, um, look, listen, hands up, all about having a few beautiful things and I haven't finished yet. There's one or two more items. And you might go, yeah, and there'll be one or two after that and maybe there will. But I am definitely at a place where I can't see myself buying 10 Hermes bags or, you know, 25,000 Chanel bags or whatever it may, may be or Louis Vuitton the few pieces I have at the moment I adore absolutely there'll be a few in the future but I just want to keep it tight and that gives me the freedom then to simplify my life to make it easier and just enjoyable actually there's this thing that the Swedish do if I have any Swedish people looking in please let me know if this is something that's a fact or is it a myth apparently the Swedish people they uh, start to downsize from the age of 50 which i think some people might go god that's very morbid i don't think it's morbid at all i think it's so practical i think it's you know you're not saying oh god i'm dying or i'm dying soon or anything like that it's just that i'm at an age now where i don't need as much stuff my life has changed all the rest i'm going to downsize a little bit and you weed out your life where you don't find yourself in your 70s or your 80s going oh my god overwhelmed with all these decisions of what to get rid of how to get rid of it or worse still if you didn't get rid of it then it's left for your children your loved ones and everybody else in their grief to do that job so i think that's a very very practical and wise thing to do the next thing i wanted to talk about is aesthetics and lifestyle so if we have all these 50 80 90 bags whatever amount we have um as we uh, go, grow evolve our aesthetic changes our lives changes our our needs change our kids grow up maybe you never had kids whatever it is our our lives are constantly evolving so is our taste and so that's why i would say if you keep it like to a you know quite tight and leave room wiggle room is always a good thing to have a little bit of wiggle room where you can kind of go well i do love that bag and i can't keep my mind off it and i can't keep my eyes off it and i just want it i can't keep my eyes off of you De -de 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 -de. there she goes again i'm singing this back it's been a while and uh yes yeah, so i just think absolutely that if you can't keep your your mind off a bag it's for you for sure for sure but you can sell one and bring in another one and you don't have to have mountains of things to look after mountains of things to ensure mountains of things to lock up every time you go away and make sure there's somebody looking after your house if you want to free yourself up and go travel the world because that's what i'm going to do and i'm going to take you with me the next one i am going to talk about is handbags are to be used now you've heard me say this one a few times before um i know a lot of people buy handbags for investments and 
or just the love of handbags. I personally don't think a handbag is very much an investment, particularly oak. The only one handbag I think in my collection that may be an investment is my Birkin. Even Chanel, I mean, it's very, very hard to make any money off Chanel now. I mean, obviously if you keep it in pristine condition and it's in the box and you have your receipts and you have all the, the, the stuff that comes with it, you know, you might be able to make a little, but I mean, it's not a reliable source of income. It's just not. Uh, Birkins and Kellys, yes, if you buy them in the store and retail and you get them for their uh, retail value, yes, they can be sold for possibly double the price if they come with the full set again. But there are more reliable sources of income and where we're heading in the economic uh, situation of the world at the moment is very unstable. And if everything, God forbid, crashes and apparently a lot of economists and financial people are saying that, that is gonna happen. Well, then are the prices of bags gonna go down? Are we all gonna lose our in the handbags? Are we buying at the high prices just like the houses? They're all gonna go down. And if we hit like a recession or anything like that, do we lose all the money in our value, in our, in our, the value in our handbags? That is just something to consider. I'm not trying to be a down here. I'm trying to be practical. Um, this is, these are things I think of and I'm a happy person. Well, not all the time, but most of the time. And uh, yes, so I do think that's a, a great one to, to keep in mind. And number 10, nine and 10, we'll put nine and 10 together. Number nine is, as I've said before, experiences. Experiences, freedom, and time are the most beautiful things you can have in your life. And that is what I've always strived for. Absolutely, as I said, I love, you know, nice things, but experiences to me are the number one priority where you can create memories, you can enjoy your time on this earth. That's what we're here for. And if you want to have all those experiences and maybe like, yeah, I want to bring my handbags with me. Like even on my up and coming trips, to be very honest with you, I had this conversation with uh, Katie yesterday. Truth, I said to her, Katie, I don't know which, and like Marbella is beautiful. We're gonna to go to beautiful restaurants and top-notch eateries and all the rest of it. And it's somewhere where people bring all their nice stuff. But to be very honest with you, I don't wanna bring my Birkin because I'm going to Greece before that. And Greece is, you know, be a bit different. Plus I'm gonna be traveling by myself. So that's Greece, by the way. So if you have any questions about that or solo traveling, let me know, I'd love to answer them. I will be vlogging it for you. And as I said, it's a different holiday. So I don't wanna to have to mind my bags, look after my bags, God forbid, wherever I'm staying, if you know something's stolen or things like that. So they're all things to consider. And as much as you think, oh, I'm gonna bring that traveling and this traveling and the, all these traveling. No, I'm not. I'll probably bring my Chloe Woody, Woody Tote, my little mini one. I was talking to Katie yesterday, I'll probably bring that. And I might bring my, it's not here, my mini square Chanel. I might bring that just because it's easy, it's handy and that might do in Marbella. So um, yeah, this is another thing to consider, but let me know about your travel. Like particularly if you, I'm not gonna be with a husband or a boyfriend or a significant other, it's me on my own in Greece. And then when I go to Marbella, it's with my family and my mother. So, you know, different holidays, something to consider. And number 10, and I've already touched on it, is travel. As I said, if you are traveling, it's one of those things where you go, I don't wanna have bags at home that I'm worrying about, and God forbid, the house is safe, this is safe, that's safe. That's where I'm at. I think when you're in your 20s and 30s, you don't probably think, I, I certainly didn't think about those things as I, people took after stuff and I wasn't worrying about those things. But I think as you go on, you do start to worry about those things and you want a life of freedom, you want ease, you want just, there's enough stress in life. There's enough things to worry about, whether it's children or friends or parents or whatever you, partners, whatever you may be worried about. We don't need to worry about our handbags as well. So that's it. And as I said, at the end of the day, everything is about contentment and balance. And if we reach contentment in our life and we have a little bit of balance, we make life so much easier on ourselves. If we know that the next handbag, and you know, we have an intelligent community here for sure, and I know you guys know that the next handbag isn't gonna make you feel, it makes you feel happy, that dopamine rush for a few minutes, but overall in general, it's not gonna affect your happiness in life. You have to do that from the inside. So that is my life advice for today on the handbag situation. Watch out for the couple that I am. Um, yeah, I'm gonna downsize a little bit more. Um, it's gonna be a challenge because everything I've left, I really love. A few of you have been on going, Viv, will you screenshot me there, please? I'm in for that bag or that bag. I've screenshot you all, so don't worry. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna have a good think and I'm gonna let you know. And please come along on my journey to Greece, Marbella, and maybe Portugal. Uh, over the next couple of months or next month or so, uh, it'll be a little bit different. 
but sure you're my friends and I want to take you with me. So until next time, be kind, be safe. Don't forget to subscribe and like and comment and all the rest of it. And uh, be kind, be safe, be compassionate. And I love you lots. I appreciate you. Bye guys. Mwah.